Chapter 12, The North. The Industrial Revolution was a period of rapid growth in using machines for manufacturing and production that began in the mid-1700s. In 1769, Richard Arkwright invented a large spinning machine called the water frame, which could produce dozens of cotton threads at the same time and lowered the cost of cloth, cotton cloth by increasing the speed of production. So you can see in this picture, the spinning machine called the water frame. The water helped spin the machine, which increased productivity and made dozens of cotton threads at the same time. The first textile mill in the United States was created by Samuel Slater in 1793. Here's an example of the first textile mill right here. He had the strategy of hiring families to come do work uh, and divided factory work into small, simple tasks that everyone in the family could do. And this became known as the Rhode Island system. This is Samuel Slater right here. In 1798, Eli Whitney came up with the idea of interchangeable parts. That means parts of a machine that are identical, so you can switch them out if you wanted to. It allowed for mass production, which means the efficient production of large numbers of identif identical goods, like guns. So if you make a whole bunch of the same part, you could put a whole bunch of the same guns together. Francis Cabot Lowell developed his new, a system called the Lowell System, it was based on water-powered textile mills that employed young, unmarried women from local farms. Since they wouldn't have a family, they would be more committed to working in the factory longer hours, possibly. Uh, so that's why I employed single unmarried or young unmarried women. The system included a loom that could spin both thread and weave cloth in the same mill, so you didn't have to take it to a different factory to get work done. So here's, ooh, here's the um, little system right here. And it's uh, Francis Cabot Lowell. His girls were also known as the Lowell Girls. Facing low wages and the fear of losing their jobs, skilled workers formed trade unions. These are groups that tried to improve pay and working conditions. Uh, and these trade unions would work, employ something called strikes. Um, their workers would strike or refuse to work until employers met their demands. The transportation revolution was a period of rapid growth in the speed and convenience of travel because of new methods of transportation. So the first one we'll start off with is, in 1803, a guy named Robert Fulton, you see him right here, he created or tested the first full-size commercial steamboat called the Claremont. Right there, Claremont. It can move upriver without relying on wind power. So um, before, you'd have to have sails on a ship to help you move if you were especially moving upstream. But now a steam engine, you can move up with no problems. In the Supreme Court case, Gibbons versus Ogden, um, it reached the Supreme Court in 1824, and it reinforced the federal government's authority to regulate trade, that means control it, between states by ending monopolistic control over waterways in several states. What I mean by that is a state cannot control a particular um, body of water for their own purposes. So if you look at the cartoon, um, you can see here on this little ship, it's a New York ship. It says, get out! New York gave me the exclusive right to operate steamships in New York waters. And this one is a federal ship saying, wrong! New York gave the U.S. their exclusive right to regulate interstate commerce. So that freed up waters to even greater trade and shipping. In 1830, Peter Cooper built a small, powerful locomotive called the Tom Thumb. This is the Tom Thumb right here, which was the first attempt at a steam-powered train. By 1860, 30,000 miles of railroads linked almost every major city in the eastern U.S., and coal became a new source of fuel for this transportation. So you didn't have to rely on water power or wind. Now coal, or wood for that matter, coal would be the new source of fuel. This is Peter Cooper right here. In 1832, Samuel Morris perfected the telegraph a device that could send information over wires across across great distances. There's the telegraph right here, and that's the Samuel Morse. Morse's partner, Alfred Lewis Vail, developed a system known as Morse Code, which was different combinations of dots and dashes that represent each letter of the alphabet. In 1837, John Deere designed a steel plow to dig through thick soil. These steel plows then re replaced the iron plows of the old, Steel plows would be tougher metal. 
1831, Cyrus McCormick developed a new harvesting machine um, called the Mechanical Reaper, which you see right here in this picture. And uh, it quickly and efficiently, efficiently cut down wheat, as you can see from this machine. This is Cyrus McCormick here, John Deere. Isaac Singer, this guy right here, made improvements to the sewing machine and allowed customers to buy his machine on credit and it provided services as well. Like if you had problems with your uh, sewing machine, they would come and fix it. Ice boxes, cook stoves, matches, and safety pins are just some of the other inventions created to make life easier. That is the end of chapter 12.